I will accidentally hit the stop button. So we're picking up right where we left off. And we're setting up synthetic division. So the first line, you write k equals whatever the k value is. And then across here, we're going to write the coefficients. The coefficients are the numbers in front of the variables. There's a 1v cubed minus 7v squared plus 20v minus 19. I'm going to draw a horizontal line right here that looks like a big equal sign. And you start this process by carrying this first number down. The numbers that are under the red equal sign, those will be the, that's going to be where the answer is. The quotient will appear there. So we have the dividend here, the divisor here. Okay, carry down this number and then follow how I'm doing this. Whatever this number is, times k, so 1 times 5 is 5, it goes right there. And then combine vertically. Negative 7 plus 5, negative, negative 2. Repeat that process until you've gone all the way through the columns. Negative 2 times 5, negative 10. Negative 10. So that would be 10 with 10 times 5 is 50. Oh, okay. So the 20 minus 10 is 10. Then 10 times 5 is 50. And then combining a negative 19 and a 50, that's going to give us a 31. Now the answer is staring you in the face at this point. To get your, to write your answer, this last number here is the remainder. Okay, the last number in synthetic division is always the remainder. Let's see. To get the rest of the answer, the quotient, you start with the first variable term right here, v cubed and subtract 1 from the exponent. So instead of a v cubed, it's going to be a v squared, and then a v, and then this last number here is always what's called the constant. Well, the second of the last number. The last number is the remainder. The number before that is the constant. I'm going to put a sign right here a plus sign because that's a positive 10. So v cubed minus 7v squared plus 20v minus 19 divided by v minus 5 is v, to v squared minus 2v plus 10 with a remainder of 31. Do you all think Jacob got it right. Jacob said he thought the answer was B. Well, Let's I see. After I know, you said later, but... Um, no, I'm thinking it's D. But you got really close, didn't you? Yeah, I was like, okay. it's either B or D. It's either B or okay. D. Yeah. Okay. But I said B because I got confused because I saw like positive. Positive times a negative is a negative, so that's how you're supposed to subtract stuff. I was like, right now you're not supposed to do that in this type of Okay. Now, if we wanted to, why don't we do this problem right here Two. using synthetic division? Two okay? Two oh, well, let's see. This is just an example. And it's 5x to the fourth. I'm doing what my brother does. Okay. See what oh, I know, but it's written up there. I'm just writing it down. I'm doing a problem that maybe y'all are thinking, oh, that's not even a homework problem. It Go on. Be. But I just want y'all to see. You know there's like a slim chance somebody gets that exact question. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, theoretically, it's possible. Theoretically, it's possible if you, if you do things an infinite amount of times, there will be an infinite amount of possibilities. No two things are the same. Okay, so I just want you all to see this problem done with synthetic division rather than this polynomial long division, okay? So, hmm. Okay, you start off with polynomial long division, you have to figure out what the number, what k is. So here's x minus k is that 1 that's right there. You'll notice when you go from the divisor to the k value, you might notice the signs changing. Over here we have a minus 5, but k is a positive 5. Right here we have x minus 1, k is a positive 1. Now, write down those coefficients, 5. Realize there's not a number showing on the x to the third, so we just write a 1. A negative 3, a negative 6, a negative 8. Any questions on how I'm setting this up? You start off by taking the first number and carrying it down. 5 times 1 is 5. Combining the 1 and 5, that's a 6. 6 times 1 is 6. Combining the negative 3 plus 6, we get a positive 3. 3 times 1 is 3. Negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. This last number that we're about to get will always be the remainder. What's our remainder here? Negative 11, that's the remainder. Now, what about the variables? Well, you take the largest exponent and subtract 1, and then you just keep reducing the exponent. So it's x to the third, 6 is positive, x squared, the 3 is positive, x that last number is the answer, the number without the uh, x. That's the what's called constant term. Now, looking at what you've done there, what I've written, let's compare it to what I have over here. Oh, wait, right here. Did we get the correct answer? Did we get any remainder of negative 11? Yeah. And looking at this, is that what we have is our quotient? 5x to the third plus 6x squared plus 3x minus 3. And notice, do you remember writing improper fractions as mixed numbers? You could always write like 5 over 2. You could write that as 2 and a half. So sometimes you'll see I'm writing the uh, remainder as remainder over divisor. I prefer it written like this. R equals, okay? I'd prefer if I actually wrote R equals negative 11 instead of R minus 11, okay? So, significant, I mean, uh, synthetic division is significantly shorter than the polynomial long division. But you've got to be able to figure out what is that K value. Hmm. No. Okay, here's problem number three. Use synthetic division to divide. Problem three, let me write it down. 3b to the third plus 12b squared 
plus 9b minus 11 divided by b plus 2. Hmm. Looking at the divisor, b plus 2, at first glance you might think, well, wait a minute. You said that in order to do synthetic division, the divisor has to be in the form b minus, and we have b plus. Yeah, but I also said when you're going from here to here, from the divisor to the k value, you're changing the sign. Like right here, we have a, x, a minus 1, but k was positive 1. What am I saying poorly that k is going to be here? Is it going to be a positive 2 or a negative 2? Mm. You've got to write it as b minus. How would I rewrite this plus as a minus? It would be minus a negative 2. I claim that the b, I mean the k value that I'm going to write here is negative 2. Let me draw an arrow from here to here and say change sign. That's what you're doing. When you're going from divisor to k, the signs are changing. Right here, the minus 5 became a positive 5. That's what's tricky here. This x minus 1, the minus 1 became a positive 1. So you're changing those signs when you're going from divisor to k. Any questions on why I'm saying negative 2 is the k value? You're changing the sign on this number over here. Now let's write these coefficients out. We have a 3, 12, 9, negative 11, mm -hmm. and have y'all got the pattern down? If it gets going, you take the first number, move it down here on the answer line, and start multiplying. 3 times a negative 2 is a negative 6. 12 minus 6 is 6. 6 times negative 2 is negative 12. 9 minus 12, negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 2 is 6. Hmm, what's our remainder going to be? Negative 11 plus 6 is negative 5. So that's our remainder. I want R equals. And then start off over here subtracting 1 from the exponent. So it's a B, 3B squared. A positive 6b and then minus 3 with the remainder of negative 5. Any questions on how I'm getting this? Y'all see the pattern? Oh wow. Uh, which one is it? Uh, wow, A, B, and D all look the same. Um, look real close. Is it A? Is that it? 3B squared plus 6B minus 3 with the remainder of negative 5. Okay, so D, they have these sign, that sign wrong. On B, so they have that sign. Go back to notes. Oh. Mm -hmm. I 
I'm thinking it's A, 3B squared plus 6B minus 3 with the remainder of negative 5. Problem four looks different just because the way they have the division written with the big fraction bar. Are ready to do number four? Three X to the fourth minus twelve X cubed. Oh wow, this one isn't multiple choice, is it? Plus ten X squared minus five X plus six divided by X minus three. What am I going to write K equals? What's the K value? 3. You're changing the sign on that minus 3 here in the divisor. And now let's write the numbers all the way across. 3, negative 12, 10, negative 5, 6. Get started. Are y'all called up? You get started by bringing the three down. Oh my gosh! Oh. Uh. Oh yeah. So the k value is negative. No, it isn't negative three. I wrote the wrong thing. It's positive three, isn't it? Okay. Change the sign. You write down the coefficients and you start off by carrying the first number down. Carrying down the 3. 3 times 3 is 9. Negative 12 plus 9, negative 3. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. 10 minus 9 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3. Negative 5 plus 3. Negative 2. Negative 2 times a positive 3 is negative 6. What's our remainder going to be right here? 0. So this one has a remainder of zero. Let's write the variables for a quotient. Uh, okay, you subtract one from the largest exponent, and that's where you start at. X to the third, then an X squared, and X, and minus two is the constant. So I'm, that's what I'm after. Type in here. 3x to the third minus 3x squared plus x minus 2. So, 3x, here's my little exponent key, to the third, right arrow minus 3x exponent squared, right arrow, I'm just going to say plus x rather than plus 1x, if you wrote plus 1x it'd take it, minus 2, check our answer, any questions of how to do the synthetic division stuff? Oh, 
instead of doing the long division, is that what you mean, or? Like, um, uh, oh, oh, I mean, it's the same. Uh, if, like, when I did this problem here, you're still getting the same answer with synthetic division. That's why I did it there. Oh, wait. This little example here, I was doing this problem with synthetic division. And it still gets you the exact same answer, just takes fewer lines and is a little faster. Okay? Now, think back to before there were calculators. If there was not, a, if you didn't have a calculator to do, I mean to use, what do you think would be easier? Would it be easier to plug the three in for every one of these x's if you're doing it by hand, or would it be easier to do synthetic division? Which of these would require would probably work out easier if you uh, didn't have a calculator? Imagine plugging the 3 in right here. You'd have to figure out 3 to the 4th. 3 to the 4th is 81. 81 times 3 is 243. That wasn't that bad. What about plugging the 3 in right here? 3 times 3 times 3, is that 27 times 12? So, uh, oh gosh, uh, 27 times 12. 10 times 27 is 270. 2 times 27 is 54. So someone want to help me with my math? Is 12 times 24 the same thing as 270 plus 54, so 324? Like right here, if I were going to plug a 3 in. What you're doing. Huh? Oh my goodness, I'm just pointing at the thing. That's why we're all confused. Oh. What's what would be easier to do? this synthetic division without a calculator or to take this number and plug it in for x? I think it would be easier to... Without a calculator. Without a calculator, it most likely be very easy to just do the synthetic. Okay, the synthetic division, notice it doesn't get huge, huge numbers. Even with the, a calculator, synthetic just seems easier. Okay, why am I mentioning that? Well, there's something called the remainder theorem, and we're about to use it on problem five. It says, if a polynomial, I'm going to call that polynomial P of X instead of F of X, is divided by X minus K, its remainder is um, exactly P of, K. P of K. Okay, hold on. Let me see. Oh, look. the remainder theorem was very useful years ago before handheld calculators. And what that remainder theorem says is, if you have some messy looking polynomial you need to plug something into, rather than plugging it in, you could just do the synthetic division. Suppose, imagine if you go back before handheld calculators, and for some reason you need to plug the number 7 into every one of these X's. Can you imagine 7 to the 4th times 3 doing all of that by hand? But the synthetic division part is pretty much, you know, even if you put a 7 there, it doesn't get really messy. So, synthetic division says that this number is the same number you'll get as plugging this number in for X. Problem number five is going to illustrate that. Let's look at number 
5. It says, use the remainder theorem and synthetic division to find f of k. One way you could do this is just plug this k value in for x. Okay? But what they want you to do is do the synthetic division. Let me see. Number 5. Let me write it down. They're using f, even though it's a polynomial. And that's okay. Negative 2x to the third minus 11x squared minus 15x plus 3. And here, they're not, you're not given a divisor. You're told k equals... Negative 3. Notice on this one, you're not going to change when you do your synthetic division. You're not going to change the sign. Why? They're already telling you what K is. You only do that changing sign when they don't tell you what K is, but when they give you the divisor. So to set this up, I just write down k equals negative 3. I don't need to change the sign. You change the sign when they give you a divisor, and you have to figure out k equals. Okay? So, negative 2. Start out by bringing the negative 2 down here. And that would be positive 6. Oh, let me lift this up. Negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. So that would be negative 5. Negative, negative 5. 11 plus 6, negative, negative 5. 5 uh -huh. Negative 3 equals 15. Okay. So it would be 0. 0 times negative 3 is 0, so it drops the 3 down. The what the remainder theorem says is that f of negative 3 equals that remainder. If you look back, if you got your hands a hold of an old algebra book, uh, you'd see a lot of synthetic, uh, uh, synthetic division a lot more than you do now because when they had to plug a number, a messy number in, they thought it was easier to just use synthetic division than to and look at that remainder than to actually start. Okay, 3 times 3 times 3 times negative 2. Negative 11 times 9. Negative 15 times negative 3. Okay? So instead of plugging the number k in for x, just do the synthetic division. Okay. Remember years ago, just my second year here, before most of y'all were born. Um, Back in the old days. Yeah, 1992, the math department had a meeting at the same time a good friend of mine was having his Christmas party, and I missed the meeting. But at the meeting of... Uh, the math department voted to remove this stuff, to stop teaching it. You didn't need it because of calculators. Fast forward to 2009. The state of Texas joins other deep st south states and starts listing out in a state-funded institution what must you do in college algebra. Everyone here was surprised this was listed. So from 92 to 2010, we didn't teach this. Then the state of Texas said, start back teaching it, everyone. Okay? So it's not a difficult problem. Just do the synthetic division and look at the remainder. Okay? It would be kind of funny if, like, we, I kind of want to just test this out. I know most likely 
Normally it wouldn't really work. Oh. I'm clicking similar question on that and just. Let's that see. Question. Let's. Okay. What my little like joke thing that I wanted to do for this one? Click similar question. Mhm. Mm and just oh, and put like, negative oh, three notes. and put like three at the end because the previous one had three at the very end. Maybe just try three. Just to see something, if it will always be like that or maybe. Well, if, it, if this problem is rigged to always have a zero and end like this, yeah, that's it right. would be... Uh, that's what I was kind of trying to test out to see if like the question is always going to have like the same remainder in a way, you know? Because some of the questions that we did... It depends on how they have it written out, the programming, but uh, if it's going to work like that, it would work with this one here. Yeah, it so does seem like it will work since 5 is factorable of 20 for the last one, so I think it will. Oh, okay. Uh, but I think I'll go ahead and do that similar one that you had since I pulled it up. So here's another number 5. Yeah, sir, the answer is really just 3. Oh, is it? Yeah, I think it is rigged. Oh, well, let's see. I would never noticed that. Yeah, Negative 2 x to is, the third. I think that because this is the first question, the answer is always going to be rigged to have the answer just be the last thing. The answer is 3. Oh, okay. And you've already done it? Okay. Oh, wait. You mean you're choosing 3 because of that 3... Th that's what I this really right thought here. of, mm -hmm. but doing out the problem, yeah, the answer is still three. Okay. Well, then well, it'll be interesting to see. Is everyone's answer to everyone's number five, three? Well, I don't think it will be. The answer will always be three, but I am saying like the what at the very end is like always great to be whatever is at the very end. It just happens to be three in this case, the same as the other one. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, so you claim the answer will always be this last one? Yeah, yeah. at least for this question. For, okay. this question, for that only, question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's introducing it, so it's going to... But this is the only question like that. That's positive 10. Okay, 10. Then it's negative 4. Negative 4 times Oh, you're five. right. Do y'all see that? Yeah. I just think it's for this, this one question, question number 5. Because of the fact that it's introducing the topic. It's so introducing and that's it. Yeah, it's introducing. It's not, topic. but there's no more like this. I know, but I'm just saying right. for this question, question five, it's always going to be great to be the last question. Huh. The last numerator. Well, okay. Yeah, we can even try to get a similar question just typing in whatever's the last one. Type in negative 10. See if it's. Oh, right. wow. No. Okay, okay yeah. so your rule is not working, okay? Not for this one, at least. Huh? At least not for this one. Yeah. But hey, you already got the question. Okay, I'm going to do this one too. Yeah, I just wanted to test out that theory. This out. is still number five. Negative 2x to the third minus 10x squared minus 9x minus 10. K equals negative 4. So it would be uh, 6. Negative 6 would be the answer to this one. Oh. Okay. I just wanted to test out that theory to see if this question was always great because it was introducing the topic or if it does change. And the answer is negative 6 for this one. Okay. Well... Carry down the negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8. So that will be negative 2 drop back down. And then that will be 8 again, which it will be negative 1. Mm -hmm. So it will be 4. And uh, that would be negative 6. Okay. Okay. So uh, I just wanted to see. Okay. Let's see. So the answer there is negative 6. 
At least we know now that it's not always rigged. At least we know that now. Well, I didn't think it was until you said it. Until I pointed it out, but it just happened to be a coincidence that the first two questions had the same answer. Uh, I think if it were always working out like that, I would have noticed it over the past ten years. Okay? I mean, you learn something new every day, so... There There's out. not a lot of new algebra I learn every day. Let me tell you that. Well, I'm more mean of like, because you said you've used this for years, that maybe it's something you just overlooked. Oh, it's possible. Yeah, because there's lots of things that you might overlook and then suddenly be like, oh, wow, I never noticed that. Oh. Now, something called the factor theorem. <coughs> We were talking about x minus k, and the factor theorem says x minus k is a factor if and only if. That's the first time this semester I've used that phrase. I'll discuss it in a moment. If and only if f of k equals 0 or the remainder is 0. On this problem number five, no, actually, let's look at number four. That's a better one to look at. On problem number four, we can say that x minus three is a factor of this polynomial because that last number, the remainder, is zero. If this last number is zero, then x minus k is a factor. Like here on number three, the last number wasn't zero, so is this b plus 2 a factor? No. Why is that significant? Well, so far this semester, we've factored quadratic expressions. We haven't factored anything with cubes in it until now. On problem number 6, we're actually going to factor an x cubed expression. The only thing we've been factoring this semester are x, or x squared, so like 9x squared minus 77x plus 36. What if instead of just our quadratic expression, suppose there were an x cubed in it also? How do we factor it? Well, mm -hmm. Here's a definition that I probably should have just said right up here. K is a zero means F of K is zero, which means the remainder is zero. Like on problem number five, is this k value a zero? Well, no. The last number here isn't zero. On this number five, is that k value a zero? No. On problem four, when you did synthetic division, did we wind up with a zero there? Yes. So this factor theorem, what we could say... I'm going to state it another way. X minus K is a factor. That phrase, if and only if, K is a zero. That's a better way of stating it. If and only if in algebra means it can be read two ways. You can read it as x minus k is a factor if k is a zero. It can also be read in reverse. k is a zero if x minus k is a factor. It goes both ways. 
how does that help you factor something? Okay? So I'm going to write out a sequence of, or a general strategy on how to do problem number six. How to factor when a zero K is given. First thing you're going to do is use synthetic division. Use synthetic division. Then x minus k is always a factor. And I'll show what I mean by that in a moment. And then step three. Factor the quotient. To get the other two sets of parentheses. Okay. It's sounding worse than it is. This is actually a very, very nice way to factor something that has an x cubed in it. That's the goal here. How do we factor stuff that has an x cubed? All we factored this semester are x squares. So let me write down. Oh. Back a oh, okay. Thank you. So our goal now is to figure out a way to factor x cubes rather than just x squares. Up until this point, the only things we factored are things of like x squared minus 7x plus 6, x squared plus 4. 5x plus 6, stuff like that. How would we factor something like x cubed plus x squared minus x plus 6? And that's what I'm trying to show you with example number, or problem number 6. In order to factor something that has an x cubed in it, you have to be told a k value. You have to be told a k value that's a zero. And you might think, oh, well, how would we ever find it if that wasn't given? It's not hard. I'll show you how to find that k value in a little bit to get started. But let me write it down. F of x equals... 2x to the third plus 9x squared minus 77x plus 36. And we're told k equals 4. four. Okay. Our answer here is going to be three sets of parentheses. When you're factoring something with the x squared, when you're factoring a quadratic, there's two sets of parentheses in your answer. When you're factoring an x cubed, there'll be three sets. And so that's what we're trying to do. Figure out what are those three sets of parentheses. I'm going to set up my synthetic division. Carry down the 2. 2 times 4 is 8. 9 plus 8, 17. 17 times 4 is uh, 68. Yeah, oh, wait. I'm sure forgetting that. Oh, no. I was going to see how long it would take uh, for you to notice. Yeah, that would be 68, and that, the answer would be negative 9. Negative 9 times 4 is negative 36, so it would be 0. Okay, so negative 77 plus 68 negative is negative 9. Negative 9, negative 9 times 4. Negative 36, so that would be 0. And the remainder is 0. 
So it better be zero. Why? The instructions told us it has to be zero. that k is a zero. This method only works if you're given a key zero to use for k. Now, oops, what we want our answer to be is three sets of parentheses. The first set of parentheses is x minus k. That's what I'm saying here on the step two. x minus k is always a factor. So I'm going to write that down. x minus k. There's one set of parentheses. So over here, if you want, you can go right ahead and type in x minus, k, uh, x minus 4. Now there's still two more sets of parentheses you've got to get there. What are those other two parentheses? Well, you find those by factoring the quotient. Let's write down that quotient. What would that quotient be? 2x squared uh -huh. plus 9x minus, minus uh, plus 17, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. minus 19. So to get your other two sets of parentheses, you factor this. Now, is this something you know how to factor? Well, yeah, it's about an x squared. The things you, that are hard to factor are the ones with the x cubed. So what we're doing here is getting a process on how to factor something with the x cubed. You go from x cubed to x squared. Seems like it's been a while since I've factored in here with y'all. Numbers that multiply together to give 2 or 1 times 2. Numbers that multiply together to give 9 are 1 times 9 and 3 times 3. 1 times 9 would be the better option because 2 times 9 is 18. 18 minus 1 is 17. Okay. Oh, by the way, the second sign here is minus. So that means there's a plus and a minus. It will be x plus 9. 2x minus 1. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. A plus 9 and a minus 1. Yeah. It's been a while since I've done this trial and error factoring in here with y'all. We would have, let's see, let's foil it out. We'd have 2x squared and then a negative 1x and an 18x. Is that giving me a positive 17x? Yes. Yeah. And then... 9 times negative 1, negative 9. So yeah, we have it factored correctly. So what are the three sets of parentheses that you could start falling out in order to get that up there? Here's what the answer looks like. This is what I'm going to type in. x minus 4, x plus 9, 2x minus 1. Okay. To factor something that has an x cubed in it, your answer should have three sets of parentheses. And there's your three sets of parentheses. Now, the order in which you write the parentheses don't matter. But your answer should have a parentheses with an x minus 4 in it, then a parentheses with x plus 9, and parentheses with... 2x minus, two x minus 1. Okay. So what we're actually doing is factoring an x cubed term. The only thing we've factored up to this point is three terms with x squared is the big exponent. Here we're seeing how to factor something that has four terms and an x cubed. Number 8 is a good one. How does number 8 differ from the one we just did? Well, here on number 8, it doesn't specifically say k equals. It just says blah, blah is a 0. But the 0 is always k. So, let's see, number 8. 
we're saying negative 8 is a 0, so that means that k equals negative 8. That's right. Uh huh. Let, let me write this in. 4x to the third plus 11x squared minus 163x. Plus 40. Can y'all imagine if you were trying to factor this with trial and error, draw three sets of parentheses and start with trial and error. It take a long, long time even for me to do it. Okay? But what's our K? K is negative 8. So, we're going to do what we did on problem uh, 6. Do the synthetic division. Then write x minus k, that's your first set of parentheses. Factor the quotient to get your other two sets of parentheses. So, let me see. 4, 11, negative 163, and 40. So I will carry down the 4. 4 times negative 8 is negative 32. 11 minus 32. Yep, and negative 21. Let's see, negative 21 times 8. That's going to be a positive. 168. 168. So it will be 5. 5 here. 5 times negative 8 is negative 40, so that would be 0. And it better be a 0, because we were told negative 8 is a 0. Something is a 0 means that this last number is 0. Is it possible for like the okay. final... See, negative 8 is a 0. Mm -hmm. Is it possible for there to be a remainder? No. The, it can't be. And even if, if it wasn't, uh, if, it, if there was a remainder, do we just say it's not factorable or something? Oh, well, yeah, it wouldn't be factorable with that, with that k value. Okay? But I'll show you how to find those k values in a moment. It's not hard. It's surprisingly easy. But our first factor, we're going to get three sets of parentheses. The first one is always x minus k. So when I go x minus a negative 8, what symbol am I going to have in here? Plus or minus? Plus. X plus 8 is one of our factors. It's the first one I'll write, but the order doesn't really matter. When you're going from the k value to the algebra expression, that's when the signs are changing. You'll notice on number 6, you didn't change it here. You were told k equals 4, but when you went to the x expression, that's when the signs change. And what's that quotient? 4 4x squared uh -huh. negative 21x positive 5. So here's the thing I'm going to have to factor with trial and error. 4x squared minus 21x plus 5. Oh gosh. Um, because the first one, because the fact one is positive, they're both, going, both equations are going to be negative. That's right. The second sign here is plus, so two of the first sign. It will be Do you remember doing this factoring stuff? It will be hmm. x minus 5 times 4 times 21 times 5. Well, the 1 and 5, there's no other possibility. So I I'm going to put that in. I think it and would you be said... Uh, 4x minus 1 times x. Is that going to do it? Let's see. If I do it, I mean foil it out. 4x times x is 4x squared. Then we have a minus 20x and a minus 1x. 
Is that giving us a minus 21x? Yes. And then negative 1 times negative 5, that's a positive 5. Yep. So if you were going to do this by tri the whole thing by trial and error without doing any synthetic division, how long would it have taken you to guess that one? Oh, wow. X plus 8 times 4X minus 1 times X. Notice, the, first, the three first terms have to multiply together to give you that first term. The three last terms have to multiply together to give a positive 40. So how long would it have taken us to figure out that in order to get these terms, we would need a positive 8, a negative 1, and a negative 5 there? I think it'd take a while. Okay? This is a very nice method, rather than resorting just to trial and error. Uh, X plus 8. We do the trial and error once we have it written with just a quadratic. Those aren't that difficult to factor with trial and error. But if you're trying to factor a cubic, a thing with the x cubed with trial and error, it's going to take a long time. Any questions there? Mm -hmm. So, if you have a zero, given a zero, in order to get this factored, you just do the synthetic division and then factor the quotient with trial and error. Okay? The natural question to ask is, what if, how do you find those k equals? How do they, they gave it to us, but if they didn't, how would we find it? It's not that difficult. You say that, sir, but I mean. I said that difficult. Holding your breath for two hours is harder than doing this, okay? Well, I've done one of those things. You've held your breath for two hours? Possible rational zeros are in the form plus minus. When I say it's not too difficult, but it's, it's going to sound difficult. Factor of constant term over what's called the factor of the leading coefficient. You're looking at the last number and the first number. And I'll show you how to do it. It's really not as difficult as it sounds. But the way you find these rational zeros Factor of the constant over factor of the leading coefficient. The constant term is always the last term, the number without a variable. The leading coefficient is that first term, the one that has the biggest exponent on it. Okay. Factor of the constant term over factor of the leading coefficient. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, let me see. Give all the possible rational zeros for this polynomial. It's not nearly as hard as it looks. This is problem number nine. P of x is 2x to the third plus 6x squared plus 12x minus 8. So, Suppose we weren't given that k equal number. Here's how you find it. Okay? The constant term in a polynomial is always the number that doesn't have a variable attached. That's the constant term. Negative 8. I'm going to work only with the 8. If you know what the word leading means, 
the coefficients are the numbers attached to variables. The leading coefficient is that first one. Leading coefficient. So let's write out factors of 8. And you might think, well, what about the negative? Don't worry about that yet. What numbers divide evenly into 8? Could you all list all of those out? 1, 8, 2, 4. 1 and 8, 2 and 4. So 1, 2, 4, 8. Those are the factors of 8. And those are the factors of the constant term. Now the leading coefficient is that number 2. So let's write out the factors of 2. 1 and 2. Yeah, just 1 times 2. Are those the only... 1 and 2, those are the only ones that divide evenly into 2. And now you're going to put it together in these fractions. Write plus minus. And you're going to take every one of these numbers and put them over both of those numbers. 1 over 1... 1 over 2. 1 over 1 would just be 1. 1 over 2. It would be 2 over 1, which is just 2. Uh-huh. 2 over 1. Which is 1. Okay, so 2 over 1 would just be 2. But 2 over 2, one. I've already listed that. So we don't repeat. We don't have to repeat it. And these are all multiple choice, so even if you do repeat it, uh, they won't have it repeated. Then we go 4 over 1, which would just be 4. 4 over 2, which is just oh, 2. Yeah, 4 over 2, we've already listed. Then it's 8 over 1, which is 8. Then 8 over 2, which is 4. Okay, 8 over 1 is 8. 8 over 2 is 4. So here are 10 numbers. Of all the billions of numbers, billions and trillions of numbers out in the world, including fractions, these are the only 10 numbers that could possibly be a zero. One of these zeros. Well, if you, had, if you were told, find the zero. Then you have to start going through using synthetic division on each of these until you find one that ends with a zero. Well, I'm not asking you to do that. Just list out these. And I think they're all just multiple choice. Let's see. Oh, gosh. Let's see. They may not be in the same order I have them listed in. Uh, but it's a B. Okay. You better be... Let's see. Okay, here's number 10. Find those possible rational zeros. 3x to the third. The next two terms aren't really pertinent. 27. The 3 and the 27 are going to be what's important. See, see I, don't, I, I didn't write them all down. Just 3 in the 27. I guess I better write down the whole problem. Maybe. But I'm going to write it in a... Hmm. Do I have a... When I want a pen that's nearly dry, let's see, this 63x square and the 63x. So when we're writing down the question, can you do the smallest number first for like factoring them out? Because it's, or 27, it's 1 and 27, then 3 and 9. So okay. So like 1, it, 27, 3, 9, or 1, 3, 9, 27. Oh, I didn't just go largest to smallest, like 1, 2, 4, 8. If you went 1, 8, 2, 4, it doesn't matter. Oh, what did I say? 
don't know, smallest to largest, but it really doesn't matter. Either way, you'll get these same answers here. The plus minus things, that's the answer here. Okay. So, I wrote the middle terms in a dimmer color just to illustrate that's not the important ones. I just What's important to... are the constant and the leading coefficient. I just wanted to make sure about that. Oh, okay. I always start with the constant first, because writing out those factors, because that's the stuff that's going to be on top. Okay. Okay. Look at the factors of the constant term. Then look at the factor of the leading coefficient. And then you start making the plus minus fractions. Plus minus. 1 over 1. 1 over 3. Well, the 1 over 1, I'll just write as 1. The 1 over 3. 1 over 3. Then what are the next ones? 3 over 1, 3 over 3, is 1, so we don't need it. It's already been listed, uh huh. So then it would be 9, then 27. Okay, so 9 over 1 is 9. 9 over 3, we've already listed. 27 over 1. 27 over 3 is 9, and we already have that one. 27 over 1 is 27. And we already have 27 over 3 is 9. So, let me see. Which one is it? They may not have it listed in the same order I have it listed in. Huh? One over one, one over three. Notice, do the constant term first, not the uh, the what uh, the leading coefficient. Why do I do the constant term first? Because that's the top number. Okay, and I like to be, have it, be able to draw these arrows. One over this. If you reversed it. Why would you want to be going bottom number over top number? That doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Which one is it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It might not be in the same order I have it in. Uh, is it C? I'm thinking it's C. The only fraction I have is a one-third plus minus. It's there. Mm -hmm. One more of these. Okay. Number, okay. Number eleven. P of X is negative two X to the fourth. Plus 4x to the third, plus 2x squared, plus 18. Well, the 4x to the third and the 2x squared, you're not really using those in this one. What are the two numbers you're going to use on this one? This one? And that one. Which one am I going to write out first? Factors of 2 or factors of 18? Which one will I write first? Mm -hmm. I'll start off with the constant term first. So write out factors of 18. 
let's see this. 1 times 18, what else? Uh, 2 and 9, and there's two more. What are they? 3 and 6. Then we write out the factors of the, const um, the leading coefficient. That's a 2. Don't worry about this blue negative. When you're setting these up, just use the positive numbers. And then when you put the plus minus in front, that'll take care of all the signs. So the only factors of 2 are what? Uh, 1 and 2. So this one's going to have more, I think, than the other one. Oh, shoot. 1 over 1, 1 over 2. So plus minus 1 over 1. 1 over 2. Are y'all caught up? 2 over 1, 2 over 2. The 2 over 1 will just be a 2. Oops. 2 over 1. 2 over 2 is a 1. I've listed that already. Hmm. Ooh, 3 over 1 and 3 over 2. 3 over 1 is 3. 3 over 2. It's just 3 over 2. 6 over 1 and 6 over 2. 6 over 1 will just be 6. The 6 over 2, have I listed that one? Yeah. yeah, it's a 3. Finally, 9 over 1 and 9 over 2. 9 over 1 is 9. 9 over 2 is 9 over 2. And then, still have some more. Let's see, I'm up to 18. I've stopped the arrows just because it looks so messy. 18 over 1 and 18 over 2. 18 over 1 would just be 18. Do I need to list 18 over 2? No, it's a 9. Okay? I consider myself an optimist because I firmly believe things can always get worse. Remember once there were these problems like this where it wasn't multiple choice and it said type your answers in in numerical order from smallest to largest. How would y'all do that? If you were told to type them in from smallest to largest, what number would you write first? Realize this is two numbers, positive one, negative one. Positive a half, negative a half. Which number would be furthest to the left on the number line? Negative 18. That would be the first number you would have to type in. Imagine the number line. Looking at all of these, what would be the next one? After negative 18, you type uh, negative 9, then negative 6. At this point, it gets a little tricky. What would the next number be? You were putting them in numerical order. I'll give you a hint. It's not negative 3. What's the fraction, or what's the decimal of 9 over 2? Is that a 4.5? That would be the next one. Negative 4.5. Or negative 19 over 2. Then negative 3. Then negative 2. So what am I saying? Things could always be worse. Okay, that's my little trick for feeling that things are going good. They could always be worse. And having to type these numbers in in numerical order, that would be a little bit worse. Huh. Which one does it look like? Uh, D? Is that it? Mm -hmm. Oh, but the, I should mention that the, um, the compromise for not having uh, to type them in, there is no... Help, oh, help me solve it or view an example. So if you want to 
you know, if you're having trouble with this or if you forget how to do it, I remember the time the student asked me, uh, how are we supposed to know how to do this if it's not a viewing example? And uh, I was like, oh wow, well I sort of kind of think that maybe you would do what I'm doing in class and on the video, okay? So if you forget how to do it, it's not hard, but you have to watch the video because it's not a viewing example. And sometimes that view and example isn't that helpful anyway. Okay? So, any questions on this? This was the zeros of polynomials. And, as I mentioned just a moment ago, uh, for the, this is fall semester 2022. So, if you're watching this video and it's fall semester 2022, Check your email, I mean, check your uh, announcements on Canvas before coming to class the next time. It's possible we won't be here. Neither me nor my brother, y'all will just have no class that day. No math class. If you have a history class, I have no control over that, okay? But me not being here, I'm not going to send a substitute in. We, at this point, we're not behind. We don't need a substitute. And maybe y'all would like to have a work day to get called up, okay? Hopefully I'll be here, but if not, okay, we still have plenty of time. We're moving right along, and y'all need, some of you have gotten behind, need some time to catch up. So, um, and some of you are ahead, so maybe you want time to get further ahead. Okay, great. I'm going to stop recording this and say I'll see y'all the next time.